Okay, um, so, I did a little bit of stuff, not too much, I just, uh, I got some, oh, this is the wrong panel, I got some cooking stuff, uh, we're not gonna do Prince Mush right now, I, I realized I probably need a little bit more health to do it, I mean, I could keep doing it, and get the practice for the, uh, super guard timing, but I think I might wait till after this chapter to try again. Also, you'll notice I have a thousand Pianta tokens. I just did the playing game a bunch of times. Uh, I'm thinking I kind of want to try refund. Don't know if that's going to work. I guess I'll get like two refunds and see the difference. This might be a waste of Pianta tokens, but I don't care. Okay, I got three. That that should be okay. So both before we uh, try out those refunds, though, uh, I want to do some cooking. I did get some of the items so that all the backtracking I do doesn't have to be shown on screen. Just because you know, for this playthrough, I kind of just want to not cut out as much stuff. Okay, there was a couple of recipes I saw that I could do before we start chapter uh, 5. So let's do a mushroom and a super shroom. I think that gives me a shroom or a mushroom roast. Yeah, I forget all the shroom recipes have been changed to mushroom. Don't understand the change for that. I kind of like the idea of shroom just being a. Kind of like a slang term for mushroom. Whatever. Uh, so then... We can use Ice Storm. And that's gonna give us a... Popsicle. I think it's... I wanna say it's called Honey Popsicle, but I'm not sure. Icicle Pop, okay. I thought I made this one before, but I didn't see it in the recipes. So next, we can make a mushroom and a live shroom. I have one on me. Do I not have one? Oh. Okay. If we're not doing that, I can make a gradual syrup and a cake mix. And that'll give us a, I think it says cookie. And if you don't want to use gradual shroom, you can use a maple syrup or the uh, mystic egg you get from Petuni. Am I missing anything else? Well, with the healthy salad and the mushroom roast, we should get one of the... I think it's a zest... It... Let's see. It's not the zest deluxe. I think it's the zest special. So I think it's zest dinner is the bottom, zest special is the second best, and then zest deluxe is the, the first best. And we can use the healthy salad. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I need the life shroom. Because you can use a life shroom and a mushroom instead of a ultra shroom to get the uh, shroom steak. I think I have one in storage. Do a life shroom. I also have an ultra shroom, but I'm not doing that. Also, let's get a dried bouquet. And then I think I'll get another mushroom to cook with the dragon bouquet. <laughs> so mushroom and life shroom should get us a mushroom steak. Forget how good a mushroom steak is. I assume it's good if it uses a lot. Ultra Shroom 30. Okay, I guess it's not bad using a mushroom and a live shroom. I 
think you can, yeah, you can also use a dried shrimp too. So if you want to cheap out a little bit and still get a decent reward, that's not too bad. So I'll make a dried bouquet and a mushroom. So whenever cooking a dried bouquet, <laughs> it's such a weird recipe. You can cook it with anything except uh, any of the syrups and I think a tasty tonic. If I wanna, let me make sure on that. Space food is what it makes. Oh, trial stew, my bad. All the syrup items and trial stew. And when I mean syrup items, I mean gradual syrup, honey syrup, maple syrup, and jam and jelly. It doesn't say what space food does in this game, so. But uh, when you eat it, it gives you the allergic status, which I wanna say like, Shadow Queen and I think maybe Beldum, maybe? I'm not too sure. Probably another uh, character that inflicts it, but essentially you just become immune to any statuses except allergic. Let's see if it says anything. Oh, cool! They actually say it this time. Eating it sometimes makes you impervious to status changes. Cool. That's really nice that they actually tell you this time. Um. Oh, we need to cook that mushroom steak. With the salad. So mushroom steak and salad will give us a zest deluxe, I believe. Because like, I would say besides an ul uh, a jelly ultra is probably the best cooking item you can get. 40 HP, 40 FP. This is usually what I cook when I do late game stuff. Because having 40 HP is a decent amount. 50 is a bit overkill. Okay, and how much cooking is that? 37 out of 58. Uh, there are some of the honey, jellies, and maple recipes I'm missing. But I think I'll do those later because they're not that interesting to do. So I'm trying to figure out what this one is. Because unfortunately in my tracker, I didn't put it that recipes have specific uh, IDs to them. I should probably add that. Hmm. Maybe I'll, I'll try to work on that today and get it updated on the website. What song did I miss here? Oh, the Prince Mosh, that's right. Well, that's really cool that they actually did add Prince Mush. It was it was completely like they hint towards it so much in the original game. It was like uh, he's so good, and then they never show it off. So I'm really glad that they actually do show it off here. Uh, well, I have the money. I'll get these badges. I need to make sure to get Jumpman too. Uh, maybe I'll go to the train because the nice thing about buying badges off of Charlton is, uh, well, if I'm gonna do that, maybe buy badges up here, too. See if there's any good badge deals. So I would like to clean out the badges. Oh, also, since I, uh... Uh, I'm all done with the cooking, maybe I could try out the... badges I got. The, uh, refund badges to see how that works. And it's always better to buy the badges that are on the counter here because they're on discount. I don't know how much of a discount it is, but I know they're discounted. I believe once you buy these badges, they're not going to show up again. They do restock on certain items like Simplifier and Unsimplifier. There's two uh, that you can buy in the shop. So the max of... like You can only have two Unsimplifiers in the game. And then when I did my uh, hard mode of this game, I had three on, and I do not recommend that. It's just not fun. It's uh, interesting because you get more star power from it, but it kind of limits you on doing certain action commands. Okay. So, badges, right? I always keep doing that. Well, 
Wait. Wearing two or more of these badges further increases the damage taken. There's more than one double pane? I don't remember there being more than one. Uh, then tell me Charlieton sells more of those. I got two shrink stomps. Okay, let's give it a hammer throw, a soft stomp. Uh, I think later, after you get the third card, they sell power rushes in the Pianta Parlor. And this is really good because being in danger is really easy to do once you get Chet Rippo. Okay, so I want to see the effect of using a mushroom. Do I have room to buy mushrooms? Okay. So a mushroom costs me five coins. I think I'll test it three times. Because I think I might buy more refund badges just for testing. Or let me buy two more. So we'll do one, three, and five. And see what that is. I guess I should have a control test where I have none. Yeah, let, let me do that first before I buy any more. So maybe I should unequip the mushroom first. Or the refunds. Okay, without refund. How much is it? So let's have him use the mushroom. 758. There's not a refund P, is there? Oh wait, I'm stupid. <laughs> you don't get coins when you refund when you don't have any refunds. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so sorry for people watching this video on <laughs> and yelling at the screen of me taking off. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm dumb. Okay, let's do this again. <laughs> okay, with one. Okay, we'll have him use uh, Mario. Doesn't really matter who gets used on, I think. Okay, so it uses one coin. Like one. That makes sense because it's a low cost. Now we'll put on three. Now will it triple the output or just increase it by a bit? Oops, I forgot. <laughs> Okay, so now when we use a mushroom, is it going to be still one coin? Still one coin, okay. Well, I guess that proves it then. Having multiple refunds does not work. That means I can just sell them. But if I sell them, do they show up in the... Oh yeah, I guess it would say wearing two or more of these would increase the amount of coins you get. But I guess having multiple of these does not work. That's a bit of a bummer. I could have seen that as a really cool implementation to get more coins. I'll just sell them off then. I don't <laughs> I don't need the extra badges. At least I could sell them for some money, I guess. Oh man, I'm getting down on uh, cash now. <laughs> that a thousand earlier now. Down to measly 425. I mean, if I really strap for cash, I can just go do... Um... A dread shroom method I can I do to get coins back. It's a bit boring, but <laughs> I'll just do that stuff off screen. Okay, let me sell this badge.
Yeah, these refunds show up here. <laughs> it's a bit of a bummer. I mean, all, all the badges that you obtain in the game or have a chance to obtain are going to be here. Okay, let's uh, start the chapter. <laughs> uh, so we need to go to the pier, I believe. And then I think they'll tell us about Flavio. I think we had to talk to Bomberto over here. Talk to him again, or I guess we go to uh, the bar and talk to Flavio. Then they gotta do a little bit of—I don't know—it's annoying backtracking. <laughs> we just gotta go back to Podly and then to Bobbery, back and forth a little bit. I do like Bobber as a partner though. He's a uh, well, one I like his design, and two, um, backstory is kind of cool. Plus, he just kind of feels strong. Although uh, Bombass, I don't really use all that much because, like the counter strategies, I don't know if they're really that great. Mostly because, like, you know, the one badge that gives you, like, a counter, a counter to use all the time, return postage is all the way down in the pit, and by the time you can get it, I feel like it'd be a good badge if you... It's a good badge for going down the pit, because it's just damage that you're gonna take anyways, but since you already beat the pit, what's the point of return postage, you know? I don't know if they do anything to uh, fix that issue return postage. Also, it costs way too much BP. I think it's like 6 BP. Let me check. Check it on my tracker. Let's see. Return postage is... Seven BP <laughs> is worse. I thought it was six BP. <laughs> oh man, seven BP. Let's hope they fix that. Hmm. I do like this theme. That Flavio has. You know what? Flavio actually kind of looks like the designs that they have for Super Paper Mario. Oh, in case anybody was wondering, uh, if you ever miss some of Luigi's stories, or if you want it for your own, you can get them from here. The Super Luigi books. I think they actually have some pretty cool uh, UI and the useful items. That's not bad. I want to say each book is a different color. I might be misremembering that wrong. It would make uh, kind of cool. It would make sense, kind of, because, like, if you think about it, like, each book is a different compass. 
And if each compass is similar to like a crystal star, and each crystal star is a different color, it'd be a cool, uh, I want to say illusion, but that, I don't think that's the correct term. Uh, let me see what illusion means real quick. Illusion. Okay, I, I guess illusion is probably a good term for it. This is a reference to another, like, person, thing, that, uh, yeah, it would just, it's an illusion to, uh, the crystal stars, because, I mean, obviously, Luigi's on his own quest of seven things, Mario's on a quest for the seven crystal stars, makes sense that they, they could possibly be illusions to each other, and the book's referencing that different colored, uh, issues. So who's that extremely suspicious Goku guy over there? It's it's kind of funny. I never realized it, but uh, Crump's horn is like folded in a little. It's kind of a nice touch. Let's go get Bobbery. Get that salty sea dog. Oh, you know what? Mm. Let's start the battle toad. Oh, also, another kind of cool thing is, uh, I'm probably going to be doing some other videos on some different games. I think they're mostly going to be demos or one-offs. Um, and the reason I'm doing them is because I was watching a uh, Paper Mario Direct. Now it's not like an official Direct at Nintendo. It's more so people inspired by the Paper Mario series making paper games. And uh, I don't know what the definition of a paper game is. It's just inspiration from Paper Mario and some of those demos um actually want to uh, play I got some of them to play. I think it's like two or three I kind of want to play on this channel just kind of like as a first looks kind of thing so expect those in the future this scumbag <laughs> so you'll find out why he's a scumbag in a moment <laughs> but this isn't the only time his his uh, skullduggery will rear its ugly head And the reason I'm, uh, I found out about those games is because, uh, that's how I found out about Born of Bread. And Born of Bread is a really great game. They actually showcased, uh, Born of Bread again in the Paper Mario Direct. Or, I shouldn't be calling it Paper Mario Direct. Uh, I guess I could check real quick what it's called. Oh, they call it a paper direct or a paper verse. I guess one of those two. It's mostly just like indie RPGs. And Border Bread is a really great one. I recommend it to people. Um, they do do some updates, and I'm excited to see them after I finish this series. Because uh, I kind of don't want to do uh, multiple series at a time. I did do that before. And. It kind of was like a lot to keep in mind because like I was I did forget a little bit of what I was doing in the recent ones because I had three games I was doing I was doing the Paper Mario 64 mod uh, Paper Mario TTYD which just makes Paper Mario 64 but more in the gameplay style of Thousand Year Door I was doing the hard mode of this on GameCube and then I was doing Born of Bread
Um, and I, I think I was doing okay, but spreading that stuff apart in a balanced way was just kind of difficult for me. And I think it's better for me to just kind of focus on one thing. I think if I had somebody editing for me, I think it would be fine, but I'm, I'm editing myself, so. Do you like this theme? I wonder if it's going to be a lay motif of Bobbery. In this situation, would a live stream not have uh, helped her situation? Or does live streams in this world mean only via like a battle or something? Because that does prevent somebody from passing away or fainting, I guess. But that, that's pretty sad, though. Going away on a long journey only to find the love of your life passed away. Oof. Well, Potley, you really should have gave him that letter, man. Letting him sulk and being depressed, thinking it was all his fault. Which... I think of the letters that Scarlet wrote kind of helps assuage Bobbery here that it wasn't his fault and he shouldn't put too much of an emphasis on being so sad about it. The rising instruments there. That's really nice. Oh, Mario gave a little tip to the cap to Bobbery there. And it must be interesting to reading a note from uh, a deceased person that you'd love, just like seeing their writing and knowing that was them, kind of like it like brings them back to life just a little bit. And it's, it's really sad, but also like obviously you feel really happy and a huge sense of uh, I guess I would say forlorn probably the best way of describing it just that immense sadness that you realize that they're not there anymore it's a mix of emotions oh man um what is this one what does Petunia have to say She's tempting me with eggs. Oh, she is the only person I can get those eggs from, so I'll definitely have to come back there. If I ever want any egg missiles, I have to come to her.
I guess if I had to make any complaints about this chapter is that the front, it's very, uh, at the beginning it's very boring. Because, uh, well, when replaying it, the first time I think it's fine. Because I have to keep in mind that a lot of people have never played this game before and it's probably their first foray into Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. And, uh, there's a lot of text up front. <laughs> And since they also made text a lot slower in this game, uh, it's gonna feel a lot uh, slower. I guess people wouldn't know how slow it is compared to the original, because you can skip text <laughs> in the original and you can't hear. I think you can speed it up a bit, but it's not much you can do. Oh, they actually show that Flavio is the one who's writing this. Okay. I don't remember if it was actually obvious that Flavio, Flavio was writing this stuff until like the end of the chapter. Maybe I'm just misremembering. <laughs> but yeah, this chapter has a lot of text in the beginning. The intro in the uh, jungle or the island <laughs> I like the kazoo there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, the early island stuff is kind of boring. I do like the stuff in the cave, but... Well, it's mostly the island stuff is annoying because there's it's just mostly backtracking and the, the island stuff is so linear that I don't really think it's all that fun traversing. Whereas the island level in uh, Paper Mario 64, uh, that area is more expansive and there are various ways to go across the island. And I just, if I had to say Paper Mario 64, because I think that's chapter five in, in 64 as well. I would say that chapter is much better than this chapter. Wait, is it chapter 5 in that chapter? Let's see, because chapter 1 is when you go to Kuba Village. You go to the... Chapter 2 is... The Desert... Chapter 3 is when you see Bo. Yeah, because Chapter 4 is Shy Guy... Uh... Play Box? I, I forget what it is. It's when you go fight the Toy Box, that's what it is. Yeah, Chapter 5 is when you go to the island. So in the chapter after that... Is that the, uh... Plant area? No, I think there's one more before that. I think you go to the uh, Ice Snow Haven, is that it? And then Chapter 7 is the uh, Plants. And then Chapter 8, you go to Bowser. Yeah, that sounds right. Because it's the same amount of chapters in this game as that one. Oh, sorry, I'm not <laughs> uh, reacting as much to the game. <laughs> Bomberto is freaking out. I guess so is uh, uh, Papatch as well. Facial expressions. Oh, there goes Bobbery. Our ship.
If only they knew there was a secret pipe that returned them to Rogueport on this island. Unfortunately, you need the, the crystal star map to unlock it, so they're not going to get it anytime soon. We get to meet a nice little fellow. Uh, isn't there... I'm pretty sure there's a star piece over here somewhere. Maybe I'm thinking of the star panel. That's it. We can go meet Wacka. I just kind of feel bad about hitting him, though. Oh! Coco, <laughs> That's an interesting sound effect. I would not have expected that as the, uh... Sound effect for Waka. I wonder if it's like a Japanese sound pun, onom onomatopoeia pun. They like to do that a lot. 